Welcome to another edition of Garden Talk with Aya Food School, and that stands for As You Are Food School, and I'm Jamie. And today we're going to talk about some benefits and boons of having a garden, in particular an herb garden. I don't know if you can see out there, but it's rainy and it's kind of not a garden day. Definitely not something the weather you want to be in. Some people enjoy it. Uh, today I think it's it's a it's a better day for for maybe some crafts and some tea, what have you. And so today, indeed, I have a craft that I'm going to make that's from the garden, and I'm going to share it with you because perhaps you can do this yourself. Now you don't need an herb garden to do this, but it's good if you do. And I'll talk about creating an herb garden too as we do this, but we're gonna make sage bundles today. And it's a cool little easy, super simple thing to do. It's a nice gift to give and uh, they're quite fragrant and you can make all different types and varieties of sage bundles. So let's get into it. I have uh, some select herbs here that I, I made some uh, piles with from my garden. And let's see here. So I have some sage, and this is a, this is a type of culinary sage actually. There you can use pretty much any type of sage that you want. Um, but this is, uh, a nice culinary sage. It's a white sage and I have some lavender and I have some rosemary. So if you're thinking about building a an herb garden, one of the most, or well, some of the most essential herbs that you need for a herb garden are, indeed, there's a song about it, uh, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. That's right. So I don't have parsley here because that wouldn't be a good herb to to burn or to, to dry out uh, for, for a sage bundle. But I do have some sage, rosemary, lavender, and I have some rose petals. Uh, well, I'll be having some rose petals um, off this fading rose, and it's, it's, a, it's a good one to, um, to add to the addition because it's fading and they're gonna dry out anyway. This is what I made last night and I put dahlia leaves in here and uh, it's got sage and rosemary in it. And I think, and there's a little bit of lavender in it. I've made sage bundles in the past for people. And it's amazing all the things that you can do with sage bundles. <clears throat> Once upon a time, when I traveled to Australia, I came back with a plethora of raw opals and fire opals. And I've made probably a good dozen sage bundles and inside the sage bundle, each one of them I put in a one put in a an opal. So like I said, you can embellish them to your heart's content. And so let's get busy and do this thing because I don't want to be here all day and take up your time. But I do want to share this with you because it's an easy, easy thing and it's a wonderful gift to give. Now, why <clears throat> people have sage bundle? Well, why sage bundles are great? There's a number of reasons, um, but the sage has been used eons to cleanse your space, and I mean you can go as deep with that as you want, um, but Throughout tradition, <clears throat> many traditions, sage has been used to cleanse the, the, the air of negative energy and remove all the juju <laughs> from, uh, from the air, so <clears throat> from the environment. So one thing you want to do really easily, you want to get some, some what you need as your herbs and some twine or yarn, string. I wouldn't use yarn per se, but you could use other types of string. And a scissors, there's my twine and scissors, and maybe even like a small pair of pruners. <clears throat> and I'll show you why when we get there. Okay, so with this sage, you wanna take one of your thickest stalks of sage Let's see, this one will do. 
And basically, at the end of the sage, you want to, I go in between the um, stem there, just to give it a little more. You want to wrap it and tie it, just a simple knot. And that's going to hold your end. The thing about this knot is you want to leave a tail. Okay, and I'll show you why. Now with your string, and again about 36 inches is what you want, you're going to start layering. And I usually use about three pieces per herb. So let's see, that's three pieces of sage. I'm going to put about three pieces of lavender. <clears throat> Maybe two. And then my rosemary. I think I've mentioned already that I've made culinary sage bundles for people. And you can burn them, but you could also just have them dry out and crunch off the dried leaves in your um, delicious dishes and do it that way instead of burning them you can eat them <clears throat> all right so then you start bringing your twine around and you want to make it very tight about midway is when you want to start adding some other embellishments in this case i have this beautiful rose again it was a rescue rose my probably 90% of my garden are rescue plants that people just didn't want. And if you have a pretty good community out there, you can perhaps share plants, but I wouldn't share plants that are infected with disease. Most of my plants, people just didn't want them anymore. I got apple trees and choisa and hydrangea. So thank you all those beautiful people that shared those things with me. All right, so you don't want to go all the way up to the top because you want to leave some of that looseness like that, right? So basically, that's about it. I said 36 inches and I'm seeing now maybe 40 <clears throat> is needed. Anyway, so you go back to your tail, back to where you started and you tie that. Again, in a simple knot. If I had a little more string, it would be much quicker. All right, almost there. There we go. All right, so now <clears throat> you wanna cut off any of the extraneous bits, dead leaves, um, a little bit of that tail, that leftover tail, and any bits that just kind of poke out that you don't really like there. I can get a little OCD with this sometimes, go figure and uh, just get it perfect. <laughs> There's no such thing, right? Well, that's basically it. And then, if you have like a little cauldron, which I found this at a, it's, it's an excellent piece. I found this at a garage sale, I believe. And just put your extra leaves in there and in a few days when they dry out, then you can burn them and smudge away the, the bad juju that might be hanging out. <laughs> All right, so there you go. There are numerous ways to create your sage bundles, and they're great gifts. And uh, looking out for your peeps so they can get rid of the bad juju <laughs> in their environments. And you can light them every day. Please, 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 if you're going to share this information, please burn your sage bundles in a, in a protected environment, as in like a bowl. I use my cauldron. Ooh, I use my cauldron thing. 
or um, a bowl. I have another bowl, a sage burning bowl. And um, you never want to leave it unattended. So there is that caveat. So please, please, with everything, I beg you to keep it safe. And uh, But at the same time, enjoy the smells, the lovely scents and fragrances of a sage bundle. You don't have to burn them. They're, they're pretty nice as, as is. But if you burn them, just be smart about it. And that's it for that. Uh, if you want to create an herb garden for yourself, very simple. You only need probably... 20 square feet. You can even do it in containers. And again, the staples are parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Add a little lavender, some oregano. And if you if you don't have these things to, to create sage bundles, but you really want to make them, you can go to the grocery store and uh, buy herbs or farmer's markets and just get about <clears throat> a handful of sprigs for each sage bundle. Again, great gifts and pretty thoughtful. All right, much love to you guys. Have a great day and I hope you enjoyed uh, this little tutorial about benefits and boons in the garden or having a garden and uh, sage bundles is definitely one of them. Enjoy this day even though it's raining here. Uh, it's still a lovely day. Much love to you and enjoy your garden and your day as you are. Have a good one.